Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. I would like to continue talking about different kinds of energy and uh, this lecture is about chemical energy. Chemical reactions, atoms and chemical, chemical reactions. This is kind of introductory lecture to chemical energy and um, uh, to tell you the truth I think it's more belongs to the chemistry course rather than the physics course. However, again, one or maybe two um, general lectures about what actually chemical energy is all about um, will be presented in this particular course. Now, um, this course uh, is part of this lecture, actually, is part of the course Physics for Teens, um, which is available on unisor.com. Uh, if you found this lecture by itself somewhere on YouTube or somewhere else, um, I, I do suggest you to actually go to the unisor.com uh, website because this lecture actually it's linked from this site and also for each lecture there is a detailed textual explanation which you can use as a textbook basically and then it's a course so which means it's logically connected one lecture after another and there are um, problem solving lectures and there are exams uh, etc and the site is completely free there are no advertisement no uh, strings attached okay now, talking about chemical energy, well, let me start from uh, something which we have already covered. We have started with mechanical energy, and it's all about moving objects, one relative to another. We had potential energy, like, for instance, the, uh, some kind of an object above the level of the ground, it has potential energy because there is a gravity. And we had kinetic energy when the, move, when the object is moving. Now, our next type of energy which we considered was heat. Now, here we go a little bit um, deeper into the object. If mechanical energy is all about objects and their positions and moving, heat energy is related to molecules inside the objects. So, how they are moving, and the heat actually is the intensity of the moving molecules. Now we are going into deeper, even inside the molecules, and that's where the chemical energy is located, if I, mean, if I can say so. Because the chemical energy is related to how the molecules are structured. Now, again, without going into uh, uh, very uh, important details uh, of how actually the molecules and uh, atoms are, are constructed, let me just say that the molecules contain atoms related to each other using some kind of a bonding. There are some bonds between the atoms. It's related to their electromagnetic um, qualities. Now, there are many different molecules. I mean, the whole world is filled with um, extremely large number of types of molecules. However, the number of atoms these uh, molecules are created from is significantly less. At the moment, the science knows something about a hundred, a little bit more than a hundred, hundred and one or hundred and two, whatever, um, different types of atoms. And by the way, not all of them actually exist in, in, in nature. Um, some of them are created artificially by, uh, by people. But in any case, we have a relatively small, like 100 plus um, number of atoms. But from these atoms, all the multi multitude of different uh, molecules and different substances and different, different objects are created. Why? Well, because we can have different atoms in different quantities and even in different configuration, how one is attached to another using some kind of a atomic bonds, and we will get a new type of molecule. So, from about a hundred different atoms, we have millions and billions, whatever different kinds of molecules, whatever we can basically create. Okay, so molecules are um, 
basically constructed from atoms and there are certain uh, relatively limited number of atoms. Now atoms are related to each other um, through some kind of a bonding and that's what makes up the molecule. So a molecule is these atoms of specific type in a specific configuration and specific quantities which are connected somehow among themselves and that's what makes up the molecule. And the chemical energy is, and now I'm making a definition, chemical energy is a potential energy of this bonding which exists between these atoms. Again, potential energy, for instance, of the object relative to the um, Earth is dependent on the gravity and the distance, right? And the masses. Now, same thing between the atoms. They are related through these forces, electromagnetic forces. So it's an electromagnetic field somewhere um, is acting. And relative to this field, relative to their um, attraction uh, uh, to each other, they have potential energy. Now, if you break some bond between the atoms, basically destroying the molecule as it was created, then we can actually release certain amount of age, uh, energy. This potential energy will become kinetic energy of something, or heat or something, in any uh, some some other type of energy, obviously. So again, the definition is that chemical energy is a potential energy of the atoms in the molecule, which are somehow relate to each other using the uh, atomic bonds. So. How can we basically release this energy? Well, this is uh, the mechanism of chemical reactions. So that's why this lecture is about atoms and chemical reactions. So what is a chemical reaction? It's a reaction which basically rearranges atoms in certain molecules to create some other configuration of atoms, which means some other molecules. So again, we uh, have this type of hierarchy, if you wish. Mechanical energy is objects. Heat is related to molecule movement, molecular movement inside the objects. And the chemical energy is related to atoms within the molecules. And the chemical reaction is basically rearranging the atoms in as much as the heating Per, uh, heat transfer mechanism is basically transferring of the movements of different molecules or um, mechanical energy is basically related to um, movements of the object so this is all hierarchically object molecule atom now there is something deeper obviously like electrons for instance within the atoms or protons or neutrons etc but that's not subject of this particular lecture we will address this issue some other way. But anyway, there is a hierarchy. We are going from the macro world to the micro world. And the energy exists on every level. So the chemical energy is the energy on the level of uh, atoms as they are combined into the molecules. We don't go deeper into the atom yet, right? Okay, so I covered this. I covered this. By the way, all the atoms, I was talking about 100 plus uh, different atoms, they are arranged into some kind of a, a periodic table, which uh, uh, Dmitry Mendeleev, the Russian scientist, was the first one who actually came up with this. Uh, he positioned these um, elements according to certain principles in this so-called periodic table. And it explains in some way certain qualities of certain um, uh, uh, elements of uh, of this uh, table, um, some of them behave more or less similarly because they are related to each other in some particular property of their characteristics, whatever. So um, now, the molecules are uh, made of atoms. Now, how they are made? Well. There are very simple molecules which contain only one atom. Example, iron. The symbol is Fe from Latin ferrum. So the 
one atom of iron constitutes one molecule basically that's basically what it is right one molecule consists of one atom that's it now there are some other cases for instance oxygen the letter is O this is a symbol oxygen but we use this O2 why because the molecule of oxygen contains two atoms of oxygen same thing let's say uh, hydrogen hydrogen is H2 hydrogen now in this case we have one molecule in this uh, one atom per, uh, per, uh, per molecule in this ca case in this case we have two similar atoms within one molecule now there are other um, uh, chemical compounds for instance we can have um, carbon dioxide which is CO2 C for carbon O for oxygen and two for two oxygens so it's one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen combined together make up uh, the carbon dioxide so we're not talking about why they are connected to each other but there are some bonds right now let's just stop here there are bonds who are which are actually combining these atoms together of electromagnetic kind bonds all right and that's why we have chemical energy because these bonds have some potential energies like electromagnetic field inside the molecule all right so and these are relatively simple molecules there are more complicated molecules for instance um well actually one of the most complicated molecules is molecule of um, protein I mean some protein there are different kinds of proteins but they're all very very complex and uh, the number of atoms within one molecule of protein some some somewhere on the order of half a million so you mention one atom two atoms three atoms half a million atoms inside one molecule and they're all connected to each other inside this molecule all these half a million atoms all right okay next next I think I would like to exemplify how exactly our chemical energy can be released from uh, from the molecule so we are talking about rearranging chemical reaction is a rearranging of atoms um, uh, so there is one set of molecules let's call it original molecules then we somehow uh, um, mix them together or whatever it is and as a result of this uh, we have another set of molecules and that other set of molecules obviously has different total uh, potential energy of the elements uh, these molecules are created from so there is some kind of a difference between the original set of molecules and the potential energy of the bonds inside them and there is a final uh, after the chemical reaction uh, set of molecules uh, which are basically transformed atoms are rearranged and the total uh, potential energy of the uh, um, atomic bonds may be different from this one so if this one the final is greater than this one it means we need extra energy to convert this into this if the other way around if my final molecules um, have all together have less energy than original then we will have certain amount of energy released and that's actually how we uh, get the energy from from certain sources like petroleum for instance all right so let's just consider a very simple case case of coal burning okay so coal contains carbon that's the element of uh, of the periodic system a periodic table of Mendeleev 
um, and um, what happens if we will start heating it let's say put some kind of a flame under it now the carbon will start the coal will start burning actually right if it's a real coal anthracite or whatever it will start burning it's the carbon inside which is the most um, important component of the coal it will start burning now what is burning actually well here is what happens there is oxygen in the atmosphere and whenever we are heating the coal well putting some kind of flame underneath the chemical reaction starts and the chemical reaction is this one so if before this was a separate element and this was a separate element now these two one molecule of carbon and one molecule of oxygen are combined together and they form a new molecule now let's think about just logically speaking um, um, we, we can compare amount of energy here and here and what happens actually is the following this amount of energy here is less than some of these two chemical energy and that's why it's supposed to release energy and yes indeed whenever the coal burns it releases the energy the heat the light and all that the only thing is in the very beginning we have to apply a certain amount of energy to start chemical reaction as soon as it starts it produces its own heat and light and whatever and subsequently it feeds itself so the amount of heat uh, which is produced by initial reaction is sufficient to have the next step and the next step and the next step and uh, obviously whenever we are for instance um, using some kind of a uh, fireplace or whatever that's exactly what happens what happens in the fireplace all right um, now so this is uh, one molecule of carbon and one molecule of oxygen combined together make this one now there is a terminology uh, endothermic and exothermic uh, reaction so endothermic is consuming heat exothermic is uh, uh, is uh, releasing the heat so in the beginning this reaction is endothermic just to start it but then as soon as we start it it actually releases so much heat that it's, that it's enough to not only to continue the uh, the process of burning but also release into outside world heat and, uh, and, and light all right now let's consider a different case now uh, you all heard about the water being H2O. Well, what it means is that one atom of oxygen is connected to two atoms of hydrogen. Now, what if we will mix hydrogen and oxygen? Well, if we will put the plus here, we will have a disbalance, right? Because you have three atoms here and, and four atoms here because the molecule of hydrogen contains two atoms and the molecule of oxygen has two atoms. How can I make this equation correct? I have to put two here and two here. And what happens now? I have four atoms of, oxygen, uh, of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. And we have three times two, six atoms, four atoms of uh, hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. Now this is correct. Now, what hap how, how can we make it happen? Well, again, apply some initial uh, heat. You have to light it up. And if you have a proper mixture, like uh, for every two molecules of hydrogen, you have one molecule of oxygen, you will mix them in some kind of a reservoir and, lit and, and light it up, then it will be like a a little explosion maybe 
but it all depends how we do it but for instance it's a little explosion and as a result you will have just the water and obviously the sound maybe etc etc and maybe some light also by the way this is the principle on which um, there are some cars which are working on hydrogen on liquid hydrogen actually if I'm not mistaken but anyway that's that's the reason actually they supply oxygen from the air and they start this reaction they light it up and then the reaction starts and it produces certain amount of heat um, and, and other types of energy which moves the car all right so these are two very very simple example examples now let me just talk about very very complicated uh, e e e example of chemical reaction which also by the way this is also in the beginning it's endothermic thermic endothermic and at the end I mean not at the end whenever we started the reaction it starts to be exothermic so first you have to consume certain amount of energy to start the reaction and then it produces enough energy to feed itself all right so the complicated much more complicated um, way of chemical reaction is photosynthesis now photosynthesis is basically the process inside the plants how they grow why do they grow well they have a very um, complicated mechanism of basically extracting the needed material from whatever is available now what's available air is available and from the air they take co2 why is it important because they need c they need carbon to build their cells now from um, water they are getting hydrogen because hydrogen is also very very important for organic um, uh, objects like trees for instance a lot of C's a lot of H's so a lot of connected between themselves um, carbon and uh, hydrogen atoms participated in in all the molecules which are inside the cells of the of the plants and oxygen as well so but these are major components plus there are some other obviously they take from the from the soil some some uh, other minerals or whatever but these are two very very important and they're using uh, carbon and uh, and the uh, uh, hydrogen to build their cells and what happens by the way in between actually they uh, there are something some material which they're building and there is an extra oxygen which they basically release back into the atmosphere so that's exactly why we need the plants to replenish the oxygen which we are all consuming so the more plants we have the more CO2 which we are producing as a result of our functionality will be consumed by these plants and instead they will release uh, the oxygen and meanwhile they will grow obviously so that's what this component is but this is again this is a very um, complicated process um, which I don't think we can actually reproduce uh, just by ourselves in a laboratory I mean the plants are doing this but the way how this re these reactions are actually happening I don't think we can do it right now maybe I'm mistaken all right so what's next let me just check um, yes another example okay another example is the batteries now what is the battery it's also chemical reaction but actually it's even a little bit uh, more than chemical it's also reaction inside the atoms now I was telling in the beginning that I'm not going to go inside the atoms but in this particular case for the case of a battery we do need it because it's not only chemical but it's also electromagnetic kind of a reaction and here is what happens um, uh, inside the battery The battery has something which is called a node, something which is called cathode,
and something inside which is electrolyte electrolyte some substance now there are different kinds of batteries there are different kinds of material used for anode and cathode and electrolyte but the whole story is that there is a chemical reaction between anode and, elect uh, and electrolyte as a result of which there are certain uh, changes, chemical changes in the anode and electrolyte and some electrons actually are going from the anode to electrodes, uh, to, to electrolytes. Then the, another chemical reaction between this and this and these electrons are going to here. So there is a rearrangement so now there are chemical reactions as well because the original m b uh, material can change whatever, we are, we are, whatever it's made of. But in any case, the result of this, and again, we're going a little bit deeper than atom. Inside the atom are electrons, which are basically carrying the negative charge. And these electrons are moving from here to here through the electro uh, electrolyte using two chemical reactions which are happening here. And then, since this is done we have a, a, an excess of electrons here and less electrons than neutral here so this is negative uh, this is positive becomes and basically the electricity can actually go if you will close the loop with a wire then electrons will go back here because there is a uh, uh, there, there is less electrons than neutral and this is more electrons than neutral so electrons will go this way all right okay now as a summary chemical reaction is a reaction which is rearranging atoms in the molecules now during this reaction um, we have certain original molecules and certain um, final re the result of reaction final molecules and their energy their chemical energy which is inside them, which is a potential energy of the uh, interatomic uh, bonds, can be different. And depending on this different, reaction should either consume more um, energy or release energy. And in cases with, with which we are more interested in, we are releasing energy. For instance, for, um, for our existence, now we, uh, the humans, we are consuming food and somehow the chemical reactions inside our body is changing the composition, the atomic composition of the food, converting into whatever it converts into. But what's important is that during this chemical reaction, we have energy produced, and that's why we actually exist. That's, that's the source of life, actually. These chemical reactions are the source of life because they are allowing to basically to, to extract the energy, the chemical energy, from, uh, from the food which we are eating, which is a very, very complicated process, much more complicated than coal burning, but somehow we still call it burning, but that doesn't really, really uh, reflect all the complexity of this mechanism. Okay, so it was kind of an introductory lecture about what is exactly chemical energy, and I'll probably do another lecture which will be about uh, some kind of quantitative characteristics which chemical reactions are exothermic, which uh, endothermic, etc. Uh, for a couple of examples. And probably that's it, because again, the more detailed um, study of the chemical reactions is de definitely belongs to the course of chemistry. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much and good luck.